Hello everyone. Thanks for joining the first stream for Simple Math Gaming. Uh, my name is Sam, also known as Enzo in the Discord. I am streaming the cup game between Simon and Shane. Um, they have just rolled priority dice and it appears Simon has won the priority roll. Um, so they are just trying to get set up here. Just having a few technical difficulties with obviously being the first stream. Um, so it's going to be a good going, but we'll be uh, getting into it as soon as possible while the players select their rosters. Uh, I am not sure what threat level we've got here, um, but it'll be interesting to see. But we've got. But we have got uh, hammers and demons downtown. Uh, I believe the hammers was from Shane, uh, so he lost priority. And it appears Simon has picked secures. And we are getting into it there it's be interesting to see what threat level they go with um, sorry i'm just trying to make sure everything's all running smoothly on my end it's always a struggle for the first one um, as i'm not sure so from going from before the cut here uh, both players went five and one Simon uh, lost his last game for the season win against Morgan. Uh, so Simon went 5-1 and Morgan went 6-0. And Shane, I believe, lost his second game in the season and then continued on to a 5-1. Uh, so both players went really well in the season. Um, this was Simon's first season for TTS. Um, so he's performed very well for a first season for him there. And Simon's quite an accomplished gamer in other games that I have played with him. Uh, he's coming from like a War Machine and Age of Sigmar and Warhammer background. So it appears we've gone with a 19 threat level. Uh, so on Simon's side, while these are loading here, we've gone, I'm going to guess, with a Magneto led Brotherhood. Uh, with Mystique, Juggernaut, Toad, and Hood. And then on the spider foe side, we've got Green Goblin, Cassandra Nova, Lizard, Venom, and Mysterio. I believe they've already also picked board edges. Uh, and then cards-wise on the Brotherhood side, we have Mag Magnetic Refraction, Deception, Asteroid M, Do You Know Who I Am, and Follow Me. They're rotating the board here now. And then on Shane's side, we have the Grand Illusion, Race for Impact, Mental Domination, Lethal Protector, and Follow Me. I will, sorry, I've just realized I will need to turn on Stream of View so to help you guys see easier. I believe we still will be running with the clock, but I'm not sure how experienced the players are with running clocks. Um, so I'm not sure if they're going to be turned on or not. Uh, but both teams have gone five wide with the priority for Simon. Uh, so Simon will be holding priority for most of the game until Follow Me is most likely played or someone is obviously dazed or KO'd. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see first turn plays because I know Simon uh, was not a fan of Hammers when he played Simon. Um, so I don't think he's too happy with this setup here for Hammers. Um, but we will see how it all goes. We do have Mike 
Dambois coming in later on to chat with me as well. Uh, the game was just started 30 minutes earlier than what was expected. Uh, and Mike is in America, so it's a bit harder for him to get set up at the moment. I'm currently in Australia. Uh, so it's currently 9.30 in the morning for me here. So it's a bit easier for me because it's uh, Saturday here. We're living in the future from most viewers. Uh, and Simon is also in Australia, and Shane, I believe, is in the US. He was, I'll just bring up some details for him. So he played in the US East bracket, Shane. Uh, and then Simon obviously played in the Oceanic bracket. Uh, so we've got a bit of deployment going on here. Mystique right up the front with Mysterio. Juggernaut standing on Fisk's trailer, and then we've got Xander Nova on that same side there as well. It'll be interesting to see this matchup because I know Simon's quite an aggressive attrition player, especially with Magneto and lots of uh, throwing going on there. Whereas the Spider Foes is going to be a uh, very tactical uh, with all the tricks and traps. Some might say that can be played. Uh, I'm not sure if Simon has versed Spider Foes before. Uh, so it'd be very interesting to see his game plan here. Uh, it might be a nice sort of learning experience for him in that case. Or I might be completely wrong and he's played them a few times. Who knows? I'm not sure. I'm not too familiar with Shane. Um, being from the East Bracket. I've not really interacted with Shane before, but we had a bit of a chat before the game started. And he is a very welcoming sort of fellow. Uh, we will be joining the players after the game is finished to talk over how they felt their game plan worked uh, and then seeing how they're going to continue on with the tournament for the winner and what they can improve next time for the loser. Because always... Losing, you always seem to learn the most out of a game. But I think we're pretty well set up here on my end. Uh, we'll just have Mike coming in later on. Uh, so there might be a few technical issues when that gets started. Um, and then what have we got down here? We've got Toad down here on this side for a little sneaky steal on the hammer. And Lizard as well. And the last one for the spider foes will be Venom. I will try and keep the camera semi-stable, but I am so used to rotating it around aggressively while playing that I uh, need to uh, keep my hands away from the mouse. Um, I've just got a message from Mike saying it'll be on as soon as possible. Uh, so I will keep waffling on here and see how we go with all of that. I have, do have a, a large delay on the stream as well, if you're wondering why um, something might be out of, out of sync there. Uh, it's just to keep it fair for both players. Um, so no one can really interact with their game there. So it looks like both sides are down. And we are into turn one. We've got the constructs going down for Magneto. And it looks like both sides have gone heavy in the middle uh, with two side characters depending on what side each player goes for a hammer. Be interesting to see how the spider foes deal with the in your face attrition from Brotherhood. while they're still just going set up for their turn one. Uh, so Shane has pretty much taken the exact same roster that he took in season eight to go through and go five one with. I believe he did change one or two tactics cards. Um, and I believe, I'll just bring them up on my end here. Uh, Shane did take out Hood and throw in Juggernaut, but obviously Juggernaut's not being played here. I think other than that, his uh, setup is the same. He did change one of his secures, though. I believe he took out Infinity Formula 
and threw in Demons Downtown. Uh, and then Simon, on his end, he took out uh, Malekith as a distraction piece because he was never going to use him anyway. Uh, and felt better to throw in Lockjaw. And I believe he also took out... I might just have to try and bring up his list here. I don't think it's being played anyway. So it probably doesn't even matter. But yeah, that's the, the main setup for those two there. And it looks like we're going with a mistake and possibly... Oh, I've already missed the first... Turn from the spider foes. Obviously, with Lizard moved up and grabbed that hammer, and Mystique is probably going for a deception play there. Yep. So Mystique will be pulling in Lizard with his nice medium base, medium move. So we get far along the side here. Uh, pulling in range Oh, okay. So that's what, what we've got going on here. He must have forgotten a tick on one of his characters. Hmm. I'm not sure why Lizard went first if Simon won priority. Is there a. Oh, sorry, it's an out of activation. Sorry, that's my bad. I just realized Deception is not a... Uh... Sorry, I'm still somewhat fresh to this game. Uh, I've picked up a few things, but I have still missing out a few beats. And we now have three hoods on the opposing team. Beautiful. I will keep remembering not to fling this around too much. And then when we get into a center sort of battle on over these portals and we see who gets incinerated. Uh, we were zooming on, on the action, so we get a clear view of ranges and whatnot. Looks like we are pulling in a lizard with Magneto. Not sure what Simon is measuring here. This is due to my inexperience with Brotherhood. Oh, he's just measuring a short move and his range three polarity or keeping within range of the uh, lovely incineration. So I'm not sure if Simon will want to keep Magneto there. If he's going to move him elsewhere, otherwise he may be incinerated. But hopefully he's just grabbing the hammer and moving along. Or has he rolled some dice here as well? Oh, here we go, so dice rolling. Got two lovely crits and obviously the extra dice for the hammer. We have no wilds here. Oh. And then no defenses on the lizard side. But he will reduce damage by one. Which has actually saved him here. A lovely bit of tanky lizardness. A very nice builder as well on Magneto's end there. And he's most likely going to be dazed here from a throw from Magneto. Thank you all for joining in for the first stream or later on the first video. Uh, we are a oceanic sort of based streaming group. Uh, and we're trying to get as many TTS 
cut games out as possible because I know a lot of people are interested in what sort of play styles and the most to get out of their own rosters for themselves. So we want to try and get as many videos out there as possible. We'll be covering more games in the future. We have uh, Morgan and H3M3, or I believe Hemi, this game later on tonight or tomorrow, depending on where you are in the world. I see starting the forklift at size three into Lizard, which is a size two, uh, and that will... Where is the defensive dice roll? There we go. see how much he blocks here won't be able to reduce below zero so we're taking one damage minimum if he doesn't block at all I've still got an asteroid M for later on in the turn I think he's thinking about the brace for impact here no. Oh, he's rolled very sort of average, I suppose. He's got a crit and a shield in there as well. No, nope. so he will be dazing here and dropping the hammer over to most likely Magneto. Nope, he looks like he's putting it on Toad. So Toad will be running away uh, because he has no hope of grabbing it on his end. From the Spider Foes player. No. Does he bring it over to Hood? Hood's got a nice rapid fire attack there. He can always use the extra hammer if he wants to be aggressive with it, but I think he is going to be a bit more cagey here and throw it on the toad later on next turn. But if you have any issues or you want to improve the stream here, feel free to be taking a comment. And then as, as always, I've always forgotten already what is going on, but we've got a, uh, are you going Wargaming Dad? We, both he and I have a game set up for Monday, so that'll be interesting. And they've got the lovely plastic crack coming on here. Will the players be taking at all? Oh, talking. Sorry, no, they won't be talking. Uh, we can't join in with them because it, I think it'd be too much of a distraction. Uh, and I think probably just I've not really seen anyone talking in their games in that terms. Uh, but we will. There's a bit more of a distraction, I think, for people. We did try and set up something similar to that just to get a bit more insight and info, but it wasn't going to work in the end. And I think it's a bit more distracting for the players when they're interacting straight on the stream like that. Uh, but we might in the future try and get a recorded game of them just talking it out while we sit sort of in the background and don't have a commentary. So it's just straight gameplay with player audio. Uh, but it depends if the players feel comfortable doing that or not because I know there's a few tactics as well when you're playing over voice chat. Uh, but there is such a delay that I uh, will probably forget about the chat at points, I'm sure. But I hope you guys are enjoying the stream and if you wanted to, uh, if you have any criticisms that I can improve, I'm always looking to improve the stream here, considering this is our first one. But we've got Mike joining us in a few minutes as well. So we'll get that all set up and ready to go. Thank you everyone that's currently joining in. <laughs> I can just tell it the whole stream. So uh, Simon is a doctor in the local area. Uh, oh. <laughs> We'll have to he'll, we'll have to get him in the uh, the players' room later on, and you can discuss how Simon is a doctor later on. I know Simon's up for a good bit of banter, but uh, we'll be joining the players after the game just to go over their tactics and discussions. Uh, but it looks like we've got Juggernaut. Did he? No, nope, he's just moved up. 
got in his three power and done a push. Uh, so he's, he's two power and got in a push. He's coming over to have a little go at Cassandra Nova. So we'll see how that goes there. He's going to push through that crate and destroy it and give it a bit more power. And I just put him in range for some nice damage going into Cassandra Nova. I'll just bring up her card. No, oh, her card here. She does have a healing factor at least, um, but not the most defensive character at the moment. Has she has no power, but she does at least have a pseudo stealth. Oh, we've got a wonderful hit roll here going from Simon into an average 50-50 roll, I suppose, out of the defense. Put four damage on to Cassandra Nova. So we're getting a bit of power flowing into this Brotherhood team. And then we're going with a throw, I believe. Is this... So you're going to be throwing him here with a... Do you know who I am? Bring her back into the Brotherhood side. We've only got Hood to really go for the rest of the turn. Yeah, it's going to be a brilliant game. I am keen. I've seen you floating around the channels quite often. Uh, so I'm very keen to get a game in. Where in the UK are you from? Because uh, I'm not sure if you know. We have a Local hero also in the chat being Pete. Pete's uh, from the UK as well. So we can always get a bit of a rivalries going on there. But no, it'll be a very fun game. I'm keen to give it a go. We did have a, do you know who I am? It looks like he's going for another push on Juggernaut to put another damage into Cassandra Nova. Oh, and she's rolled the reactive physic destruction and done one damage to Juggernaut and gets the short advance off of it as well. Or as Morgan likes to call it, the slow advance. <laughs> We've just got Toad and Hood. On the Juggernaut side, oh, sorry, on the Brotherhood side, and then see what plays Venom and Green Goblin are going to get up to here. So we will be getting an incinerated in the power phase next turn, Magneto. There might be a bit of attrition going into him later on. And Venom has just gone for the double move into the center of the board. Let's see what Hood can do here if he's just going to move up and do a hex shot. Oh, one second, we're just going to swap over and bring in Mike. I'll give Mike a call. Sorry about the audio if that comes in. Hello, is that coming through now? No, I've not got no audio on your side.
That's check, it. Check one, two. There check we one, go. Two. There we go. Can hear me? I can hear you wonderfully. Go. Let's me just okay. bring in the camera on your end so we can get a lovely view of your face there, Mike. All right. And I, have they started? Yes, they have. Yeah, they started at 9.30. They started half an hour earlier. But that is right. Oh, I've well. just been waffling on for the last half an hour. <laughs> well, I need the information to join the game too so I can yes. see what's happening. Have, I have got a screen share. Is the screen share allowing you to view? Or have it's I not still loading. It's still loading. Oh, there we go. Uh, we'll pick that one and we will go live here. Still spinning. There we are. There, there we go. It All seems... right. I'll turn off my camera on my end and then I will bring in your camera as well. Okay. But we've just. Well, had... it looks like I've missed a lot. Yeah, so turn one's all done. Uh, summon one priority and took secures. Okay. And we resulted in hammers, which Simon took out of his list from the previous season because he didn't like hammers against Simon. Hmm. Okay. And we've had a few plays down the end. So we had uh, Lizard was uh, deceptioned into the back lines. Uh, mm hmm. And it looks like Magneto took care of him. Yep. And then we had Juggernaut and Cassandra Nova taken out the top end there. Mm, okay. Yeah, I was talking with Shane earlier, and I know he's a big Cassandra Nova fan, so it'll be very interesting to see how he uses that character. Uh, unfortunately, Juggernaut is not where he wants Cassandra Nova to be spending her time because she can't move him effectively. And it looks like, uh, you know, once Juggernaut gets into her, that's going to be hard for Cassandra to deal with. Yes, he's already slid into her. And he did throw a do you know who I am into her as well. Uh, and then mm. she played her reactive and moved slow away. All right. Well, it looks like the action has been fast and furious already. Uh, Shane is up uh, on points at the moment, but I don't love his board position. Yes, it's a bit all over the place at the moment. Um, but we'll see how he goes. And Magneto will be copying. Is this not um, incinerate damage on the portals? Or not... It should be. Uh, Magneto's handing out his constructs, which, and I believe incinerates also happen in the power up phase. Okay. So whoever has priority actually gets to decide the order in which those things will happen. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure if Simon wanted to place Magneto on the incinerate there. I think having Accelerate on Magneto is not probably the best thing to be having on him. Yeah, he's probably not you know, looking for Magneto to be a hitter, and he's going to try and leverage Toad and um, Hood to be his point scorer. But looking at um, Simon's list, he's looking to get some attrition going early in this game. Uh, with Magneto and Juggernaut on the board, he's going to want to hit hard. Um, so letting uh, letting Shane soak up the incinerates and then um, you know dealing out that damage uh, might be his his early tactic. I'm also very surprised to see Mysterio on the field because uh, Mysterio has some rough play into both Magneto and Juggernaut, seeing that Juggernaut he can't move Juggernaut at all, and uh, Magneto just needs to pay two power. Uh, when on defense, and he can't be moved by mystic attacks either. So I'm not sure what role he's looking for Mysterio to play in this game. Okay. Um, he's chosen an he's chosen an interesting squad for sure. Yes, yeah, so I'm just adjusting your camera there so we can bring in that lovely face of yours. Ah, I don't know if the viewers <laughs> really want to see that. But... <laughs> yes, I know. I'm not sure what Simon's experience is against spider foes either. Um... I know Simon has played a limited amount of games, um, but done very well in the previous season to get into the cut here. Um, uh, Shane also, a fairly new player. Um, okay. I think he said he's been playing since about April. Mm -hmm. um, so he's obviously having a ton of success in his first full season in the league, which is great to see. You know, We always want to see uh, new blood coming in that uh, is picking up the game quickly and give some competition to the veterans who have been around for a while. Um, and I think that's a great point in that spider foes aren't a terribly popular affiliation. And I think that gives Shane a bit of an advantage in that 
people probably don't have as much experience into them as they might some other more popular factions, um, which means uh, it's really easy to, to slip up and make a mistake just because you aren't used to playing against these models. Mm-hmm. Jay has a lot of tricks on his side with uh, things like Trick or Treat, yep. Young Green Goblin being able to blow up terrain on move, and the move shenanigans that Mysterio brings in, and then obviously Cassandra Nova's litany of tactics cards and ways to move people, and Lethal Protector. It really makes a, uh, a dif- difficult decisions for his opponent. Um, and I think that's part of his plan, is just to increase the cognitive load on his opponent and make him uh, really think hard about every decision, and hopefully that leads to a mistake. Yes, yeah, it's definitely when you've got so much going on the board, um, especially with the spider foes, if the person's not experienced against them, they're going to forget a lot of the stuff they can do, and there'll just be a chain reaction of stuff going through the table, and you go, oh, I'm over here now taking this damage from what? And it's just all over the place. Um, Absolutely. It looks like Magneto's put up Magnetic Refraction. Then we have an attack coming in, but I'm not... Sure, who that's from? Magneto. Into uh, looks like into lizard. Okay. From most likely Magneto. He's going to throw one of those constructs at lizard probably to try and get that last couple of points of damage through. Yep. Might have a KO'd lizard turn two. Yeah, a bit of a misstep for Shane, I think. Um, you don't want to be giving away models this early in the game against a Magneto Juggernaut list. You're kind of playing into their game. But the good news is Magneto doesn't have a lot of options beyond this. He can doesn't have a good Asteroid M target. He doesn't have a good... Um, he doesn't have anybody else in range to attack. So uh, Magneto might get Lizard here, but then the biggest, scariest piece is activated for the round, and that's going to give Shane some opportunity to claw back a little bit, I think. Mm-hmm. Yes, Lizard was the first move on Shane's side up the board edge, straight into a deception. Uh, so that is why he's yep. there. Yep, and I wonder if that was, you know, let's burn those tactics cards and tie up uh, a six threat with my three threat, mm-hmm. or if that was just a little bit of a misstep in terms of uh, not really appreciating the damage output that Magneto can put through. Lizard's very tanky, so yes. usually he can hold on to a point, but... Uh, not today. Magneto throws the light pull into him and KOs him. So we'll see what Magneto's going to do now. Um, he has the power to maybe run his spender off of his construct. Okay. Uh, his spender can do an area attack around a placed construct, not just around him. Uh, so he might be able to get uh, Venom in there and probably not Cassandra, but mm-hmm. we'll see. How is this camera and, angle as well for the board presence for you as well, just to make it easier for you? Oh, yourself. this is perfect. Okay, brilliant. This is perfect. I'm sad to see First Blood go to the Australian side, though. <laughs> I'm really hoping US is going to pull this through today. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, we do, we're do. we a buddy country. We uh, like to cause a little mm-hmm. strife. So we're, uh... I mean, that's kind of how you were founded, right? It yeah. shouldn't come as a surprise. <laughs> Bunch of criminals. Of course, we like a bit of blood <laughs> on the board. Magneto checking to see if he's in range of Goblin or uh, Venom to throw maybe those boxes, but he is out. Um, Magneto probably wants to hold on to a couple of power here, uh, because if Shane decides to go in on taking out Magneto, maybe a web line from Venom and then a shot from Goblin and a shot from a couple of shots from Venom as well, he wants that extra power to be able to boost his defense. Okay. So spending it all on the... Um, on the spender with the construct may not be the right the right move here. Mm-hmm. He's, he's also, also got thinking about magnet refraction up as well, so he's got that extra defense around him. He does, he does, and I think he's looking here at maybe putting um, maybe an asteroid M. Okay. Which I think could potentially be a misplay. Um, it would get him a little bit more damage, but it's going to put Magneto in a position. That's unfavorable for future turns. And Asteroid M is really the one big reposition opportunity for Magneto. Once you've Asteroid M'd, you really want to be thinking about um, just sitting. And now that I look at it, I think Magneto it's has got, a hammer. Yeah, so just I don't to say think that, he can yeah. Asteroid M at all. We'll keep an eye on that. 
Mm, I think there's a hammer. To be what he's closing up. Oh, no, there we go. It's loaded properly. Toad does have a hammer as well. I'm just seeing it at the back of the board there. He's scoring that extra yep, toad. VP. Toad's doing Toad things. Yep. Um, I think what I'd like to see is Toad come and take um, uh, Magneto's hammer off of him and let Magneto maybe position closer to the middle of the board right now. And that way, that opens up that asteroid M for Magneto. Okay. Uh, you need to be careful with measuring tools. Obviously, we can't interfere or say anything in the game, but um, the rules state you are not allowed to use a measuring tool as a proxy for a base. So, oh, okay. Um, for those of you who aren't uh, used to competitive play, um, no using the you know range one tool on its side to proxy a, a 35 millimeter base, no using a range two tool to proxy your big bases. Uh, that is not allowed by the rules. It's like the one thing you can't do with the range tools. <laughs> I suppose you just got to sort of guesstimate it and then move the, the rolling stick up along as a free exactly. moving piece. Get good at eyeballing it. Yeah. That's exactly right. But we can't state anything to the players. Um, all we can do is pass along to accuser, but they don't have an accuser set up for this game. Uh, so we cannot mm -hmm. interact at all. We are neutral observers and commentators. Yeah, we're just here to provide the content. So, this is an interesting move. Um, I'm very curious as to why he's bringing Venom to Magneto and not Magneto to Venom with a web line. He didn't even measure it. Um, oh, it looks like he wants to go into Mystique. Okay. So he's going to go into Mystique with his builder. And a bleed going off as well. Yep. His goal might be to take out some of the support in Hood and Mystique and then f let the big boys run wild a little bit and focus on points okay. rather than try and really put in the damage to take down Magneto. We'll see We'll see how that works out. It's a strong roll. That's that's a good sign. Although it's a strong roll on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> three, three blocks is not what you want to see. That is a wild roll for both sides. <laughs> That's pretty much yes. maximum amount on either side. So it looks like he's putting three damage into Mystique and a bleed. Oh, she's not activated um, either. She's not activated, and that bleed is now a soft stagger. Mm -hmm. uh, because Mystique being on one health, it's very hard to just let her die at this point. You want to shake that bleed with one of your two actions. So that worked out pretty well for him, and now he's going to go ahead and throw Magneto, which, again, really good play but I'd like to see him throw him away from Toad because if I'm uh, Simon, I'm just moving up with Toad, pulling that hammer back off Magneto and opening up myself for Asteroid M next turn. Mm -hmm. It'd be interesting to see what he does there as well. If, if he remembers that Mystique needs to shake the bleed or she'll daze and try and get another action out of her. And then if well, he remembers we'll see... the Toad play as well, or if he's going to... Yeah. We'll see where, um, where Mystique ends up too because... You know, admitting just taking two actions to do work with Mystique and just sort of letting her daze is certainly an option. Right now, she's kind of out of the fight. Mm -hmm. But he's pulling her in with a web line, uh, presumably to trigger Cassandra Nova's tricks here. And he pulls her in and maybe try and get a daze. And what is her trick she's able to do here? Uh, you'd have to pull up her card. I don't play a lot of Cassandra no, Nova. Oh, good. <laughs> so. Um, she's got the psychic distraction when an enemy character ends up moving okay. within three. Use a superpower, roll four dice. They suffer a damage on hits and crits. So no, so, nothing there. No, he pings them for one with the wild. Oh, the wild, uh, hits yep. crits and okay. wild. Hit crits and wild is right, yeah. Hits them with the wild. Is his mystique. Very nice play. And that's the kind of um, difficult choices that this list, I think, is really looking to make the opponent deal with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, by moving within range three of Cassandra Nova, she can do that every time one of your characters move. It creates a difficult front line for them, for uh, the Brotherhood team to approach between Mysterio and Cassandra Nova um, and Goblin with his Night of the tr Trick or Treat blowing up terrain. Um, really makes, uh, gives Shane a lot to play around. I'm sorry, Simon a lot to play around. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of weirdness to think about, especially if mm -hmm. he's not played against spider foes before. He won't even realize exactly. what trap he's falling into. Exactly. 
you know, when I talked with uh, with Shane earlier, he said he really likes to play the game on his opponent's turn. Okay. He likes to create these situations where movement and placement is difficult for his opponent, and then let his opponent sort of make the mistake of walking in the wrong spot and triggering one or two different actions of uh, of Shane's characters. Mm-hmm. And if played really well, it's a very strong sort of play style for the game. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting to see how that early lizard, uh, the loss of that early lizard really affects him, because being down four to five against the tall list is is not where you want to be sitting. So I, I can't imagine he's too happy with losing lizard that early, but on the other hand, he's he's working his way back here, or trying to. Looks like we've gone for a spender from Hood. Okay. Uh, put the shock down on Goblin. Um, and it looks like Goblin is taking two there. So two left, and Goblin is holding a hammer. Mm. So taking him out and knocking that hammer off would be would be good. Yeah, we've just had Corey join in the stream as well, who will be co-hosting and streaming other games throughout the rest of this cut. Uh, and we have lost a lizard in turn two from Shane here. And then we've got a hex shot going in, I believe. Yep, um, looks hood. like Goblin blocks that one. The rapid fire. But he does trigger. have a rapid fire. Just one block. Just might. He's dazed Green Goblin and dropped the hammer. Yeah, now he's putting it in a position where uh, Shane has to give up a point to go get it with Mysterio. And then Mysterio potentially has to deal with Juggernaut, who is the one character that Mysterio can't deal with very well. So that's a bit of an unfortunate turn of event for Shane right there. Um, you know, I don't know if it's worth going to get it. It looks like he's thinking about it, but on the other hand, letting Juggernaut have a hammer just increases that attack mm-hmm. choices. And Mysterio's also got incinerate on him as well, so he's just even more vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And Juggernaut can very easily pay the tax to drop him to one die. Just not what you want <laughs> on a Mysterio one <laughs> dice. No, not what you want at all. Interesting to see what if he falls for that or not. He also has an active pass here. Um, pass an active pass is going to be the same essentially as conceding that hammer, but it might give uh, Mysterio some targets to uh, to deal with. If um, Simon moves up and takes that hammer because uh, Shane passes, then both big characters have activated, and Simon can kind of safely move Mysterio to the center point and take a shot at Hood. And maybe move him a couple of times into Cassandra Nova, um, and then let Cassandra Nova do her tricks. And you know that might be the swing he needs. It's it's hard to say. Um, mm-hmm. If Juggernaut doesn't go for the hammer, then we're just sort of back here in the same situation. But I would imagine um, Simon's not going to let that sit out there for an extra activation. Or no. or maybe he will. Looks like he's looking at Toad. I think he was going to just uh, play Mysterio and just leave him there, but it looks like he decided against it and has passed. I think he's yep. going with your play pattern there. Yep, uh, and Simon doing a good job just leading that hammer out there as beat. But he is not taking the uh, the play of putting the hammer on from Mysterio onto it's not sorry from Magneto onto Toad. So no, yeah, destroy down. I think that's a mistake. But um, Simon's far enough ahead where it might not matter. Or he could be looking at asteroid M, an asteroid M on Juggernaut. Um, he may not want that hammer on Juggernaut because he wants to bring Juggernaut back into the middle of the board off a of hood. Hmm, okay. A little tongue lashes he into Venom. Mm-hmm. Why not? Have anything Maybe. else to do with Toad's actions? This is the wild push, isn't it, on the tongue lash? There is a wild push on it, although might be size-restricted. And 
Simon's done a pretty good job of putting Mystique in a position where he's somewhat backstopped. So we'll see what happens. Hmm. Uh, Shane. Does... Size 2, and I believe Venom is a size 3, so he will not be able to push. No. Yes, a size 3, yep, so no push there. Looks like he's figured out what Cassandra Nova can do now. Yeah, yeah he's trying his best to play <laughs> around it. With Goblin off the board, he doesn't need to worry about that uh, hammer crate being blown up on him either. Mm -hmm. He does take the hammer on Juggernaut, takes Asteroid M offline for his two big characters, but I'm not sure that's going to matter so much. Mm. Having to move up Magneto is not what you're going to do, though, either. No, it's not how you want to spend his actions, but um, Shane with three... I'm sorry, uh, Simon with three hammers and a spider portal, so he's getting four. Two... Um, is going to put him ahead. And he can comfortably just pull back and play the back of the board with that. Yeah. Right? There's, there's, you know, he's going to be ahead. Even if it goes points parity the rest of the game, he wins. So he's put Shane in a position where Shane's got to come to him. Mm, and with two, the KO'd character and a Daze character, it doesn't really help his situation. Exactly. So I think that's smart play. We'll see if that's what he ends up doing. But I'd like to see him just put Jugs back towards that point. And they can just feel comfortable going you know, or three the rest of the game unless Shane breaks parity somehow. Is he able to slide and destroy Magneto's constructs? He is. He can slide and destroy terrain up to size four. Uh, okay. He can't destroy size four. He, I think he bounces off the size four. But uh, this will allow him to hand out a little extra power. And it looks like he's choosing violence. Going aggressive. Mm-hmm. We're going to see Nova trigger her ability here. Always nice to ping some extra damage onto Juggernaut. Mm, no damage with that. Oh, is that... Is it roll on hits? Can you bring up Cassandra's card again one more time? No worries. Thank you. Looks like it is just crits and wilds. So, no damage same coming. as Counter-Strike. So no damage coming through. We had an attack going through as well. Just his mm -hmm. builder. With the extra three dice from the slide. And one from the hammer. Where did that go into? I'm trying to work out. I think that went into Venom. I think he rolled one too many die. Uh, oh, forget okay. about the incident. The dice we'll tray. See. We'll see. It looks like. I'm not sure what's. Hmm. Thoroughly confused here. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of dice rolling for one attack. Looks like... Oh, the lethal protector? Oh, uh, yes. That That is what happened. Oh, he didn't flip the card. No, he attacked Venom, and then Venom just made his reprisal attack. Oh, he smacked so him around. So when Venom's for... attack, <laughs> he can... Uh, so many snacks. Things. Yep. He, he can use uh, so many snacks to make an attack back into Juggernaut. And it looked like he maybe even did a We Are Venom. I'm not sure how many power he had. He didn't heal so uh, no. probably not and then juggernaut uses the extra power to slide into venom for an extra damage okay i wonder who his attack went into first and would have had to have been venom he yeah i think one it, he almost certainly went into venom because that is the only target he has in range two okay and then venom took the opportunity to make a reprisal attack um and came up rather big it seems on that shot yeah, massive. And, gonna and he's going to bleed as well. Yeah, he'll have to spend a power or take another damage from that bleed. So I would expect 
that Shane's going right into Juggernaut with his first action here and trying to get that hammer back. Um, this is why I feel like he should have just played it a little more conservatively and put him on the back line. But it was a course of violence, and this time it didn't quite work out for him. No, especially when you get smacked back like that from a Venom. Not what you're expecting yeah. when you move in to cop six damage or five damage. Absolutely, and Juggernaut's, I believe, going to pick up an Incinerate here as well from that center portal. Oh, it's not what you want to do. Yeah, he's not a happy Juggernaut right now. So he's got two interesting targets for next round because he's also got Mystique there as well on her injured side. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and Venom's got lots of power, so he can do his spender. Um, I think if I were Shane, I would be looking at Venom as my first activation. Um, I think maybe I would start by throwing Mystique at Juggernaut and seeing if that gets the job done and go on from there. You can also trigger Cassandra Nova's ability off of that, and you can trigger Green Goblin's trick or treat <laughs> off of that on the crate in the middle. So he can just do a lot of incidental damage by blowing things up and, and repositioning, and then he still has plenty of power to do some follow-up attacks, and I think he even has hood in range if somehow Juggernaut and Mystique get deleted by shenanigans, we'll just, call them. Just layers upon layers upon layers of just damage one or damage two stuff here and there. Right. He can really kind of lay it on there. So we'll see what he does, but that would be where I would that would be what I would be looking at doing yeah. uh, to kick this round off. Taking Mystique off the board is is important, and getting that hammer back is important. We've also got the um, fully powered at Grim Goblin as well on his flip side, so he's got his glider ram. It's true. It's very true. You don't want him being taken off the table before he does anything. Yeah, I just don't think he has the tools to have as impactful as turn as Venom does. Okay. You know, Venom could even webline Juggernaut and then trigger the Knight of the Goblin for an explosion and then throw Mystique. Uh, he's got a lot of different ways that he can kind of peel this onion. It'll just be interesting to see how he decides to approach it. Mm -hmm. but I think this is the exact kind of puzzle Shane likes to create. Right? He's got Juggernaut in what seems like a strong position, but a reactive attack followed by a number of reactive superpowers is really going to do some damage. Yep. Looks like he's oh, played you know his Glider Ram. He might lose Trick or Treat on the flip side, actually. I take that back. He's going to Glider Ram into Jugs. And that is throwing himself medium into Juggernaut. That's right. And, and size three. So that's a big throw. With an, and the Cinerate counts for that dodge roll as well, doesn't it? It does. So Juggernaut takes two damage, reduces it um, to one, and hangs on. They're all trying to figure out... Oh, we've got another three coming off. So he's going to Knight of the Goblin. Looks like his Spender. Mm-hmm. Just moving the piece from the throw. Hmm, I think Juggernaut was rolling four dice there as well for his defense. Uh, incinerate may not affect the dodge rolls. I should double check that. You'd think. Okay. But I think he just done his spender, didn't he? Just I think he just done his yep. five dice spender, seven dice spender five. into him. Yep. It looks like now into Mystique. Okay. I think we've forgotten an incinerate defense roll there. Simon's clearing his dice roller kind of quick, so it's uh, not what you want out of a sun dice attack. That's a little unfortunate. No. Needs to do a little more work than that, I think. Oh, he's spinning it all. He's going for his last. Oh, he's playing follow me. Ah, he's going to play follow me. Very nice. Very nice. We put three into Mystique there. I think we're maybe... I'm maybe not seeing Simon's dice rolls on the... I think he's just clearing his tray very quickly. He's clearing his tray quickly. Hmm. Yeah. So follow me, I assume he's going to go with Venom here. Uh, 
Dan, I think okay. the play is you throw Mystique. Yeah. You've just got to avoid it. smack it onto his own base. Yeah. Well, you ignore yourself when you throw. Oh, yes, that's right. So yeah. he, can't, he can't hit his own base. He could not move Mystique, but I think he really wants to get the Mysterio attack off on it as well. Okay. Which he has done. So he is taking two damage, so he's going to daze Juggernaut here. Well, Juggernaut can, I believe, reduce. Oh, I see. Yeah. They're pointing at the Incinerate token. Yep, Juggernaut will daze and drop his hammer. And I did not see how it looks like he did one damage with the um, uh, with Mysterio onto Mystique. Okay. Now he's getting a little excited. He oh he did he did enough damage to remove Mystique. That's there we go. That's the uh, that's the roll for. Ah uh -huh. um, Cassandra Nova's ability. Mysterio for Mysterio oh, doing Mysterio's. two damage on me. Okay into damage with the wilds and now he has both of venom's activation i think he should just go either right into toad or right into um hood mm. Hood's carrying a hammer so that's kind of the natural uh natural target but he is going to slippery away after the attack if we don't want if uh, venom does not one shot him and seeing as he was just on the edge of range three there he's probably able to get far enough away where he won't be able to to hit him so he's putting a lot of eggs, so to speak, into this one attack basket. Into the old slippery toad. Yeah. It's rolled at least two crits in there. Yeah, that's a good roll. Might get him. Oh, but toad comes up big too. Oh. Blocks on two. But he's not going to get him. Looks like he'll put through about three damage and a bleed. Mm, I think he was hoping for at least four and a bleed. That way at least he'd be not yep. getting the double move out of him. Let's see what uh let's see if Toad moves and where. Mm, will he try and steal the hammer from Magneto? Remember that play? Yep. I think he's just more worried about getting out of range three, so he's not gonna get the second attack. It was good target selection, but I think maybe we are a we are venom would have been a better choice. Um, just get those extra dice. And this is big three power Seven. spender. Yep. Mm. But he can still web line in hood, or maybe just straight up attack him. It looks like there he's just go. going for an attack on hood. Yep. And he has spent the power, so this is the We Are Venom. Yeah. Hood does have the power to do his invisibility cloak as well, which he's spent she... four. Mm -hmm. So he'll count blanks. And rolls mystical defense as well. Correct. Oh. Both players rolling very hot dice. Oh, yes. Perfect uh, defense roll and a near perfect hit roll. <laughs> yep. Will he transform? That's a tough one. Um, the only reason you wouldn't is because you want to heal Toad. Um, but I think I would I would like to see him transform up the board a little bit and maybe go after Cassandra Nova with the charge or maybe Green Goblin. He's got some good targets. Mm -hmm. And Toad is effectively out of the fight right now. So there's no real reason to continue to protect him, um, especially because he can just go to the back of the board edge and um, he can pull that hammer off Magneto if he so desires. Mm. And he's unfortunately one power short of the nice big spender and charge if he transforms into possessed. Sure, but he's, his charge is also a builder. So oh, all yes. He needs to do is, yes, yes. Fair enough. All he needs to do is a damage or two off mm. of it and he can throw out that spender and then transform back and depending on his placement he might even still be in range of, of uh, Toad. So I, I like this decision to transform here. 
Wood is a brilliant piece on the board. He has um, so many things you can do with him and has lots of play patterns. He's a very fun piece to play around with. Yes, he is. He just needs to be a little careful where he puts him. Mm. Um, because you've, got, you've still got Mysterio. Well, Mysterio doesn't have enough power, and Cassandra Nova doesn't have enough power for them to deliver their tricks. So he can kind of activate Hood freely. Um, I don't see any reason to activate Magneto or Toad at this moment. Uh, could be wrong, but I feel like his, um, his Hood is the next piece he wants to go with. Getting the right model out there. Hmm. Yeah, it's be interesting to see who he's going to put these attacks into if he's going to choose correctly. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's a bad choice other than Venom. I think Magneto is coming up to deal with Venom. He just has to decide, does he want to go for the Cassandra Nova and get the point back? Or does he want to try and take the leadership off the table? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be quite big taking Green Goblin off. And roll some nice dice into him. Yes, yep. Um, just a big decision point here for uh, Simon as to how he wants to use that demon. Mm. Then he does also have to worry that if he does daze or KO someone, um, he will transform back into normal hood. I'm not sure that's a problem. Uh, the big advantage of the demon form is the damage reduction, but he only has two health left. So if he puts him anywhere near the middle of the board, a double tap from any character is pretty much going to take him out. Now, the advantage of going after Cassandra Nova, which it looks like is where he's doing, is Green Goblin's already activated. So that would leave um, Shane with only Mysterio left to activate this turn, if he can get the uh, days on Cassandra Nova, which okay. would put him at a big disadvantage. He'd be able to sort of freely move Toad onto that back point without fear of reprisal, and put Magneto pretty much wherever he wants. He can attack Venom, or he can just reposition for the following turn. Um, both are great options. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of pressure right now in terms of the scoreboard, so he can take his time. Yeah, he's got um, quite a nice score lead there, and he's also got the two hammers, so he's got parity for the hammer control. Mm -hmm. Looks like he just threw out the empowered Dark Lightning. Just went straight to it. Roll. I think that's probably into Goblin. Four. I had to guess. Yeah. There we go. Oh, it's because he's incinerated. That's why he rolled the four dice mystical instead of five. So playing it a little bit safe here, and I feel like this maybe. I feel like Juggernaut was the time to play it safe, and I think Hood was the time to get aggressive a little bit. Taking Goblin off the table is good, but it doesn't change the scoreboard at all. See if he transforms back into normal hood here, if he's remembered the uh, trigger, because he yeah. has to transform. There we go. Mm -hmm. And you'd expect to see him transform uh, at a spot where he can make those hex shots. Though not measuring, so that's... Never hurts to take a second to put that measure tool down. I think he's looking at putting them into Venom. Mm. He does also have a Sin right, so it's two dice mystical defense. Mm -hmm. But Venom's going to have so many snacks. Oh, depending on how much damage he takes, Venom will so many snacks him back, and that oh. could be it for Hood. He does have a rapid fire at least. He's blocked both of the attacks. Mm hmm But he has built the power. Um, my guess is this was an opportunity to build power to maybe heal up that toad. Mm, or yep. he got bleed. There's no downside. Yeah, there you go. Spent all his power. Mm-hmm. Check that point. Hmm. 
Because mm. I suppose Cassandra Noja could have just taken out uh, Toad with some of her tricks going on there without actually... Can he do, do a yep. slippery from taking the her special damage? It's, he cannot. It's only a, an attack. Okay. Um, but he's just out of range three there. Looks like he's not going to get that attack off, unfortunately. I hope he's put, Aaron, put him in a position to maybe take Hood. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, because he's right on the, the base of Venom there as well. Yeah. He doesn't have the power for mental domination, which would be a nice piece to play to maybe try and get Toad or get Hood. Uh, his tactics card. Oh, his tactics card. Uh, mental domination, here we go. Mm, so it's just a size, uh, just a size short pull. And the then that character makes a pack, so he could use it onto Hood, for example, move Hood over and have Hood attack Toad, accomplishing oh, getting Hood off okay. the point and putting some damage into Toad as well. Hmm, it's a nice sort of roll in, a nice sort of play there that yeah. you would expect if you're not played against Cassandra Nova. Looks like he's just gone ahead and dazed. Oh, wait, no, he blocks two. Yeah, that should be a daze on Hood. So he's going to transform one more time before he dazes. And then with certain plays with Hood, because he's transformed and moved so many times, if he had used him as a like a, a movement key, you could pretty much get halfway across the board with those size one transforms. <laughs> he's uh, very cool to play with like that. He is. Uh, let's I get a daze token there on him, but that's that's okay. Cassandra builds a little power, which is good. And she'll be probably looking to do some of those tricks on the Magneto when he moves up. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, he's got plenty of power. He's brimming with power, Magneto, and, and a hammer, if need be. Yeah. It's going to be a scary Magneto right now. Um but he's got to move. Can't mm. asteroid M. So. Yeah, having to waste that one turn on moving is not what you want to do on Magneto. Especially when he's sitting where he is there. He's paying some power for asteroid M. Let's see if uh, Shane knows his guards. Oh. And this is where you it's need like your accuser. Letting it go through. <laughs> yeah, this is why you need a judge in a game. You know, again, unfortunately, we cannot say anything. So mm. this is unfor very unfortunate for Shane. Um, both players really should know better, but play yeah. goes on. Yeah, this is more on Simon's onus, I think, because obviously you've got to try and know your other opponent's cards, but not knowing them is not obviously your detriment. And know. Simon also should have paid an additional power for the hammer. Mm, that is another. This, that, I think there's just an experience of not playing the game enough and not knowing some of these interactions. Yeah, for sure. Because that is, that is a big play, and obviously why he didn't try and do the toad play uh, and taking the yes. extract from him if he didn't know that was the case. Yep. Absolutely. Looks like he's is he in range two of Cassandra for his rerolls. So I would expect that maybe this is where we get. Well, Cassandra spent the two power to try and do some damage, uh, which unfortunately uh, they did not. Well, I guess Venom pays for Lethal Protector, and he doesn't have the power right now. So I would expect Cassandra's going down here. And that hammer is going over to Magneto. Yep, yeah. a bit of a bigger swing in points. Yeah. Average sort of hit roll there. Yeah, but no blocks, so that'll be Cassandra Nova down. Hammer on to Magneto again. Mm-hmm. Now Magneto's hitting real hard. Uh, 
and the hammer, the extra power comes from hammer, does that multiply with multiple hammers or is it just stuck to one? It does multiply with multiple hammers. So if you have okay. two hammers, it costs you an additional two for a tactics card. Which it looks like he's just got, he's got, he wants to play follow me at some point as well. You have to, that's a big point sink if he doesn't remember the, the two power extra. Uh, Simon has not flipped over Asteroid M. Is it possible he did not do that? He just moved within one of Toad with a regular move? Hmm. Can't yeah, tell if he's making it. another attack here. Uh, looks like he made a second attack, so... Went into Venom. He's now got his three yeah. power. Let's see if Venom snaps back at him. Yep. And I'm just going to go ahead and attack back. What point did he shake the incinerate? I'm not 100% sure. Was there a... I'm not certain either. Hmm. A little bit of loose play. Uh, but Venom's trying to make up for it here. <laughs> He's trying to carry the team now. Yeah, that's a lot of damage into Magneto. And no Magneto that's, refraction that's, this turn either. Uh, Venom does prevent it anyway with his okay. uh, Clintner, with his symbiote. They're checking for cover. I don't think it's going to make a difference, though, because he's going to get a bleed, so he's going down either way. There goes Magneto. Popping like a pinata. So, yeah, a little bit of um, good luck for Shane there uh, after a uh, misplay on the Asteroid M. So mm. might actually end up working out for Shane. <laughs> <laughs> hard, hard to call it that, but it. Uh, I guess he can't be too unhappy about the end result there, maybe? I'm no. not sure. That that was a big Bit swing a for sure with that uh that's that, that clap back. Swing. Yeah, and Venom he's... is doing some serious work. That's that's uh his third dazed character. Mm -hmm. or fourth? Is he the one who took out uh, uh who took out Mystique as well? Not a hundred percent sure. And he's brimming with power again to take priority all over again. Yes. So I'd expect... Now the question is, do you want to try and go right after Juggernaut um, and try and get him off the board? He is tanky on his flip side, but he will be incinerated. Or do you want to take that goblin and try and take out like Toad and take out... Uh, take out um, Hood and leave just the big boys? There is do like the so many targets for him to take on because I just realized, obviously, the... Incinerate goes on the power phase, so after they come out of days, yes. they all get incinerated. And he's got so targets maybe... galore. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. You'd assume he'd go with Goblin, um, just to make sure he gets some value out of him. Now, I, I like this play, Shane. He's going to try and come up and build the power so that Toad can pick up both those hammers. Actually, would have liked to see. Um, uh, sorry, Simon bringing him up. I would like to see Shane spread those out a little more. Because mm, it wasn't his activation, so he couldn't pick them up, and they just sit there floating around. Right, and with one activation left on Toad, now Toad only has one power. If he doesn't do damage, he's not going to uh, be able to get um, get those hammers. And it looks like maybe he's just playing it safe and taking one. So do we assume that Ashwood M wasn't playing? It was just a medium move? Because so we didn't get the extra no, action he, out of him. He attacked, he attacked twice. Oh, he did attack he twice. He did an attack okay. into Venom and an attack into, um, into Cassandra Nova. Oh, okay, yep. So I'm fairly certain that he played Asteroid M and just did not flip the card over. Okay. Toad is suddenly rolling seven dice here. Oh, it's six dice on his, on his builder. <laughs> well, maybe it's. Oh, oh and he's just playing. And Venom's going to lethal. Venom's going to lethal protector, which means once again, Venom's going to get to clap back into Toad if he survives this attack. <laughs> Is Venom going to daze a fourth character this round? <laughs> oh, 
hopefully he placed him within range three so he can still get the attack back onto Toad. It looks range three, but it's always hard to tell on. It is hard to tell. Hey, it always just takes an extra second to measure, and uh, I don't know, I don't want to call it lazy, but why wouldn't you, right? Mm -hmm. He was brimming with attack power and strength, but seemed to have not uh, pushed out a whole lot of damage there from Toad. Mm -hmm. And here comes the attack back from Venom. For the, for the fourth days of the turn. <laughs> well, we'll see. Venom's oh. dice got a cool... There's the cool off on Venom's dice. <laughs> uh, I think Simon was a little lucky to get away with that. Mm -hmm. But um, he also didn't build the power to pick up the hammer. So I think a little, maybe a little bit of a wash. Yeah, and then Toad's... What's he going to do with Toad now? I would... Nothing. I mean, he's moved and he's attacked. Oh, sorry. He's yeah, that's right. Yeah. Sorry. And he's got the power to do his um, hop. So he's stuck he's, there yeah, for yeah, another yeah, loot yeah, pinata. Yeah. yeah. Um, Toad is a juicy target with the two hammers, but at the same time, he's not the threat. No. So you got to kind of really carefully pick your targets. 9 10. Uh, Shane makes up some ground. He's got to feel pretty good about that, actually. Mm -hmm. And I think it's tough to activate Goblin right away here, but. Um, I think you almost have to. That shock kind of cuts down on his efficiency, but he's probably going to be a, be targeted sooner rather than later, so we'll get him off the board. Yeah, we're seeing how much power Green Gob is going to get. He's bringing with power again. On the other hand, Alan can't pick up the hammer. Cause no, because his... he can't interact with his flip side. Right. So Simon may, or, uh, Shane may be considering who the right person to go get the hammer is, the answer is Venom, um, and just move and then make a single attack into maybe Toad with uh, seven dice, and see if we can uh, see if he can put Toad in the ground. It's been a very brutal battle this one last turn, so we'll see if the trend continues on either side. It seems like both players are really all in on violence. Oh, so he decides to go with Cassandra Nova. Interesting. And he's just. He's Doing picked the up the hammer. Mm -hmm. We'll see what he does now. Juggernaut with his helmet knocked off, his mystic defense drops significantly. It goes from five down to... Two. Two, okay. So, uh, that could be a juicy target, but again, once Toad gets away, he's gone. Yeah, you don't want to escape him at all, do you? There's two VPs on a target that is very flimsy. Right, it's four health and incinerated. Now, we did not put incinerates on Juggernaut and uh, Hood and... Um, Magneto. Uh, Magneto. So, uh, another another small miss. That, that could be vital as well. Could be vital. Again, I think it's just we have two players who are a little newer to the game. Um... That's you know it's a mandatory action. Both players should be trying to remember that. We can't say anything, but um, kind of from si from Shane's perspective, you'd like to have those incendiary <laughs> oh, yes. juggernaut to, to one mystic defense. You know, suddenly makes it much easier to to put him down in one activation. Mm -hmm. They might remember when um, they start doing oh. attacks. But, not sure I share your confidence, but we'll see. <laughs> so here's mental, here comes mental domination on Juggernaut. He's going to move Juggernaut, and then Juggernaut will make an attack. So Juggernaut will make an attack into Toad. Will he get the three extra dice then as well? Because he's made a move? Uh, I don't know. Can you bring up mental domination? Oh, oh mental domination. Over. Oh, it's flipped over, yeah. Uh, I believe it's on his activation action during its activation okay, so he so... would not get the extra dice oh there we go if... but he's going to uh roll dice equal to i believe his physical yes attack. that's what it says on the card yeah so it's going to be a six dice attack into toad from juggernaut then it's it right 
Does he get to re-roll the defense roll as well? Yeah, so if he rolls hot, he gets to re-roll it. Like that. <laughs> oh, jeez. And Juggernaut delivers all of one hit. Oh, that's a shame. Juggernaut not interesting in helping out his interested in helping out his friends. No such luck. No. You play a tactics card Cassandra's like that. You sort of want to see a little bit more result out of it. Yeah, and it's unfortunate that he couldn't use it for scoring denial. Um, it's a great card to use after somebody's activated because it you know moves them permanently to a different spot. But um, he was obviously going all in on taking out Toad this turn, and that was you know, now. Now I think he's reconsidering what his priority is because with not doing any damage to Toad, do you still try and um, follow up on that, or are you looking at going you know trying to put some damage on Juggernaut and mm -hmm. take some of the threats off the board? Especially when both him and Magneto have oh. ten power each. There we go. We got there, there in the end. There's, there's the incinerates. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where, when you've got a techie roster like this, you've got to realize when something doesn't come to fruition, you've got to instantly change your whole plan of attack um, and flex those brain uh, muscles of yours. Ten rolls Yahtzee. One of, one of everything. Oh. That's four. Juggernaut reduces, so he takes three. And that should put Cassandra's Spender online. And there were t those are those and plays you're talking about where you get to move Juggernaut with one of your cards and then do damage to him before right. you've even done two attacks. So here's another opportunity for him to move Juggernaut, doing damage. On oh, interesting. He's looks like he's going into Magneto. Hmm. Is he doing a sap, with the, with the, maybe? No, he's doing the Mind Possessed to advance Magneto. I guess he's trying to just push him back out of the fight. Doesn't feel like he can put in enough damage on Juggernaut to take him down. Yeah, fair enough. That's tough. That's 6v5. So he's clearly just using it for the movement, mm -hmm. which is automatic. Oh, there we go. We have... Officially announced that that was Asteroid M last turn. <laughs> yep. The card is now in. So we'll ask them about that after the after the round. Yes, yeah, so I've written that down to uh, remind ourselves. Oh, well, she's rolled a nice hit into Magneto. Uh, Magneto rolling too many dice. Doesn't matter, but again, that incinerate. Magneto's dice have not been the best this game. They have not, and putting half damage into Magneto has got to feel pretty good, but I would expect Hood to just heal him right back up. Yes, especially since Magneto is already at max power. He's sort of lost some of that extra power he could have gotten if he'd not taken so much damage as well. And then he puts a root down on Juggernaut. Interesting play. Um, he's clearly thought about this. And what Take is root slide? Down? They have to spend a power before using a superpower. So it will make his slide cost one extra power, so four, and it will make his damage reduction cost him two power. Oh, wow. Okay. Looks like so that have taken off the route now, though. Hmm. Hmm. Not sure if that was either a misplay or a decision not change. Sure, not, not sure if Cassandra actually hands out roots, so it might have been a... Uh, might have put the wrong token out. What does she hand out in terms of... Uh, looks like she's got... Oh, she can give the root and slow conditions with her biokinesis. Oh, he power. probably didn't want to play the slow anyway because it doesn't affect jugs at all. But the root condition is certainly... Well, maybe he's changed his mind and decided that it's Hood that he wants to do it on. Not sure. Not sure what what he's doing here. Well, he's he's marked Cassandra as activated. So mm. the issue with Hood at the I mean, moment in this current form as well is he can't heal. Right, uh, that is true. Um, but he's range two of Cassandra Nova, so he mm -hmm. can put in his um, spender. I'm yes. Sorry, his builder. Ice claws. And then maybe yeah. 
And two six dice attacks into two defense might be just enough. Mm-hmm. And if not, uh, might be enough to build some power on the first one to arc lightning and have enough to heal. Yeah, so he needs at least one extra power, and then he can do his dark lightning and then at least transform, but then he's not going to have enough power to uh, do any right. heals. Right. There's also no pressure to go with Hood here. Um, other, unless you think he might get deleted. I think I'd like to see Juggernaut come in and try and deal with Goblin. Mm. You need to get at least yeah, something off the table here. He's got so much power. He can just move, punch, slide. You know, he's just got to do one damage on his punch. Which I think, statistically, you'd feel pretty good about. Mm. And then Juggernaut's loaded with power. He could even follow me into Hood if he's really keen on on uh, activating Hood this turn. It's going to be interesting to see what he does then. Who he feels is the most threat that he needs to take down. I think Simon's a little nervous about that Venom. The Venom is Venom has been putting <laughs> in a ton of work for Shane. I, I think it's really making him. I think he's really trying hard to play around it. Because I think it's making him nervous about putting people in range there. I could definitely see that. When he's dazed four people in nearly one turn, uh, yeah. outside of activation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to give him a wide berth, that's for sure. Yeah, I think uh, I think Venom's in uh, Simon's head a little bit right now. And I, I mean, with good reason. And I it looks like Simon is maybe trying to set up, throwing out his spender off that construct, which would probably get... Um, uh, Cassandra and Venom. Although Cassandra has stealth, so I'm not sure that he can target her. Mm, everything just seems to be just out of range three for him as well. Yeah. From Cassandra's nice little push there seems to have misplaced him quite a bit. Yeah, uh, Shane has really used Cassandra to good effect this game. Um, Cassandra's not somebody we see on the table a lot, but that one power guaranteed advance is obviously very strong against something like Magneto, uh, who you know, only has a short move. So it's effectively a stagger on what's um, Simon's biggest threat. Mm. So an interesting way to deal with that character. He's very clever of Sheen. So what we this rolling looks like this, mm, I'm not sure. This looks like a my guess would be Hood into Cassandra Nova. She's got the four. Yeah, she's got the four mystical defense. No incinerate, so that could have been that. No, it was. I'm I'm pretty sure it was a, a builder attack, and Cassandra rolled two wilds. Oh, two, okay. uh, two crits. Yeah, there you go. There's the one power, but he can't yeah, use it unless he does some power dark lightning. But I think that was a second attack. Oh, was that it? That was a second attack. So um, can't can't feel great about that hood turn. That's fortunate for Shane. Very fortunate because six dice into two should be putting in more damage than one for sure. Mm. Yeah, hoods when you're trying to get heals out of him. So that's what you're trying to play him for, and he's stuck in demon mode. That's not what you want. Yeah. I think this... Well, here comes Goblin now. I'm going to try and deal with maybe Juggernaut, um, although I'd prefer to see him try and get Toad. So just seeing Magnetic Refraction go up again. And he puts up Magnetic Refraction on Magneto. Which... But it looked like everybody was out of range. Yeah. Three. I'm not sure that's going to do much. Okay, so here's the... There's the glider ram, the juggernaut. Hmm. Were we able to decide if the incinerate affected dodge rolls? It, it does not affect dodge rolls. It's okay. only defense rolls. But two damage, That's that has got to feel really good. Three damage, I'm sorry. Three damage in there um, With after the damage reduction. Hmm. So, guess is this is the spender. Oh, into a no, just the one wild defense as well. No, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna re-roll that wild with Oscorp, would think. 
Um, no, nope. oh, he doesn't even need to. We see Shane. Shane's taking this over a little bit here, right now. now. The problem is Toad's still got two points. All Simon needs to do is just kind of hang on uh, to those two hammers and maybe score out his back point for a couple of turns and try and disrupt Shane a little bit with Magneto's movements. He can still pull this out. If he loses Toad, it's going to be a real uphill battle. Oh, yes, it'll be a massive point swing. He's lost all his board presence as well, and they're now fighting over the back half of Simon's board. Right, but Simon only needs six points to win the game. So that's two hammers and the back portal for two turns. And that you know Shane has to score four points to make up to basically go to 17 over two turns, which he can do, but that limits the movement of his models. Like It basically relegates Mysterio to the back of the board and makes it... 4v4 fight, 4v3 now. So, activating Magneto last with and attacking at range oh, no, 3. They've just, to pull they've just called it here. Ah, uh, okay. I think there were still some outs for Simon, but really, really difficult battle moving forward. Are you going to jump in and see if the players want yes, to chat a so little we'll, bit? I spoke the to the, the players earlier and they're, they're welcome to chat afterwards. So, we'll jump in there, chat, chat, we'll have a bit of a discussion with them. Sure. Uh, they are just in, the, find it. just in the normal chat channel there. Okay, hold on. I will switch channels. Hey, how you going, Shane? Hi. How you doing, Pretty Shane? Good. He uh, he just bounced, but he he called it. He he wasn't uh, about that board state, I guess. Which I mean, to be fair, it was pretty bad for him right there at the end. But man, that was like possibly the spikiest game I've ever played. <laughs> Venom. Well, I think I think your Venom got in his head a little bit there at, towards the end of the game because it seemed like nobody but Venom on your team wanted to do work, but Venom That's what was, I was willing saying. to just, just shoulder the, the game himself. He was like my entire team. Almost nobody did anything. <laughs> I, I think I enjoyed so, your plays with being spider foes. You got so many different players, especially with the Cassandra Nova, being able to teleport someone around or move someone around and then cop damage and then do other things. And then putting all that damage into Juggernaut as well. Um, yeah, I, I was... I was honestly right up until like the last second, I wasn't going to take Craven or I wasn't going to take Mysterio. I was going to take Craven and then I switched it right at the end. Um, Mysterio did absolutely nothing that game, but um, sit on the backboard. But I felt like I got to kind of do my my thing, which was a lot of fun, like with the with the AOE stuff and especially with Nova, mm -hmm. just like moving people and like it was just a lot of control, which Magneto hates for sure. Yeah, yeah being able to really use. Sorry, you guys. Go ahead. <laughs> can you tell we're can you tell this is the first time we're working together? Is it um no, I was just gonna say you use Cassandra Nova to great effect, and that is a piece that I think has not gotten as much play as maybe she deserves. Um I think people look at her raw damage output and kind of write her off as a below average five threat character. But I think you showed the power of her control and her out of turn damage and uh damage potential. Um just Tell me a little bit about what drew you to Cassandra Nova and why you like to put her on the table so much. So um, I, I originally I got the idea because I saw there was another foes player in East. That, and there's not a lot of foes players. So I see there's another foe player and I'm checking out the roster. And I saw he had Cassandra Nova. Um, and I just kind of, I don't know how he used it. And his roster was very different from mine other than that. Um, but I started thinking about Nova because I really wanted a five threat because I, I didn't have one at all in the first half of the season. Um, and I started, that was around the time when I started messing around with Mysterio as well. So it was, and I kind of noticed that they, they had a lot of similarities. And the, the fact that I'm taking Goblin every game, um, I, I kind of saw the potential for a lot of, for, for one, there's just lots of area stuff going on where like my opponent needs to wonder where they can walk. Um, and on top of that, Nova has the ability, kind of like Mysterio, but a lot more reliably, to move enemy characters, which can set up like trick or treat or 
her own tricks and traps or Mysterio's tricks and traps or sometimes multiple of those at the same time. Um, and then you pair that with like lethal protector and it's like, who can I attack? Where can I walk? And I think it's just a headache to play against. Sometimes it feels annoying. Sometimes I feel bad because it is really kind of like a, I feel like it relies a little bit on gotchas sometimes. And like my opponent forgetting that I have these auras. Um, but when they remember it, a lot of the time it just like, I think they get a big headache and it's like, it makes them like triple think and overthink sometimes their decisions. That's what we were sort of start st- stating at the start of the game when I was talking to Mike. It's like, if someone's not first spider foes before, um, their brain will just sort of have an overload of abilities to sort of think about. It's like, can I step here? If I do, I take damage or does I attack someone, does Venom then clap me back again, which is what seemed to happen all the time. Uh, yep. And then he moves Juggernaut into a spot. Juggernaut takes damage. And it's like, well, where can I move my characters that they won't take damage, especially when they've got one or two HP, they've got a bleed on them. I don't want to walk somewhere yep. where I can cop damage. Yeah. We, we both noticed um, during Simon's game, were any of you aware that it costed more for Hammers to use Asteroid M and then also Asteroid M not being able to play when you had um, an extract on you? Oh, did he have an extract on him when he did that? I didn't even. I knew we we were talking about the the extra cost. Okay. I guess if yeah, if he had the if he had the extra hammer, then I didn't even realize that. Yeah, I don't play a lot of Brotherhood. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm happy that I didn't lose because of that. But um, no, I mean, I think at that point Simon just was like, I, I think he played well. I think it was a super crazy spiky game on both sides. I think it was just we were both kind of exhausted. Yeah. yeah, we were commenting on that Asteroid M turn that it seemed like a huge swing for him because Magneto comes in and busts Cassandra Nova, picks up a second hammer, but then Venom immediately kills him and yeah. on the yeah. on the attack back. And it was almost like, well, it didn't, you know, the, the play shouldn't have happened, but it didn't really work out the way he wanted it to either, I think. So yeah, I guess um, it was a little like... bit of a double-edged sword there if he had just moved and attacked Cassandra Nova once. Uh, that game could have gone completely different anyway. So, um, yeah, a bit of bit of unlucky luck for you, I think. Yeah, that makes no, sense. it was definitely really weird. Um, it was I don't know if like in the early game, Lizard got I think five damage put on him by Magneto, who didn't even have his rerolls. So when that happened, I was pretty sad, and then Lizard just instantly dies, pretty much. Mm-hmm. I have to like because he got dazed. I had to walk Nova over to the left hammer, which felt super bad because that meant i'd have to spend the first turn double moving with her to grab that and then the second turn double moving away from juggernaut so like i didn't even get nova online until turn three and it kind of felt like i was really playing uphill for most of it but um Ju- i mean venom carried the weight for sure were you anticipating that deception or was that something you just weren't really thinking about like lizard's your go-to midline guy because he's tanky I, I knew he was going to deception there. Um, mm-hmm. I just kind of like I've I played against it a few times already this season, and I figured with the way it was because I knew he'd need a double move to do it, which means Mystique can't attack me. Uh, Mysterio or Magneto could get one attack, but he'd have to move, and I wouldn't be within range two, so there's no rerolls. And outside of that, it's just Toad. So I figured that Lizard would actually be fine even with the deception, and then I could next turn, you know, throw throw Magneto and run away. Um, but that didn't work out that way. And I mean, we both saw the, the spikes that happened like throughout that game on both sides. So some of the yeah, dice. Even out. <laughs> crazy, crazy dice game there. A lot uh, of the Shane had, oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I just want to follow up on that. Shane, how do you keep your head when something like that happens? I mean, you lose lizard turn two, you're down, um, four to five now against the tall list. That's <laughs> That's a that's an uphill battle for you. You know that's exactly how you don't want to start a game against a Magneto Juggernaut game. How how do you recenter yourself and move forward? Because you you played an excellent game from that point forward for sure. Not that that was a bad move. Not you had played a bad game before, but like you didn't let that tilt you. I guess is what I'm saying. How do you how do you? Yeah, keep it's kind presence? of funny because I I get more salty in casual pointless games than I do in tournament <laughs> games every time. Like without fail. Like if I'm just playing a pickup game or like a practice game with my friend, I get so annoyed when things are going like that. But um, I think it really helps if I'm in a tournament because I can just like, I don't know how to like describe it. It's just like very, like I've played a lot of tournaments before for different games. Um, and it like it helps to remind myself, like I'm playing against a really good player. 
Mm -hmm. And like, there's going to be dice spikes, but like, I don't know. It's, I I don't know why I don't get it tilted in tournament games. I just, I don't know. It's the one scenario where I can keep a super level, like cool head. There you go. For everybody who's listening, uh, the way to not get salty when something bad happens, we don't know. We don't, we don't know how to do <laughs> I it. Don't, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really have no idea. <laughs> no, no advice, no insight, nothing. There's, sorry. I have no, I have no <laughs> guru advice for that. Um, you use all your salt in your pickup games with your friends. That's my advice. Then you have none left for the tournament. Rate your friends, be kind to strangers. That's the, that's the takeaway from this game. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's, it's when it's um, most important that you can't have the saltiness. Because in a tournament game, if you get salty, well, then all your strategies and stuff sort of fall out of the way because your brain's too focused on what just went wrong. Like, especially when yeah. we saw Juggernaut go into Toad uh, and nothing really happened. It's like, you've got to then recalibrate to find your next out, um, especially mm-hmm. when it's a, a big swing like that where a juggernaut should be able to do at least a few more damage into Toad. That way you can kill him before he slippers away. Right. Oh, you mean Venom going into him? No, no, when you mo- mental dominationed. Um... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was the, uh, I was saying, every time I use that card, that card's amazing. I think that's one of the better t- t- tactic cards like in the game, but every time I use it, I do that. <laughs> I roll like that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, and I think I loved, I mean, it was nice getting to like, like this is the most control I've ever tried against Magneto really. And it's like kind of goes to show how it worked. Cause I don't even think I used brace that game. No, we were worrying about the brace when, uh, Magneto was going to throw into lizard. I think we were, you guys, yeah, were I kept it. <laughs> every time it was like, he had another thing to throw if that didn't work. So I was like, <laughs> I just need to like save the brace for the bigger thing. And if I die, I die. And Magneto was brimming with power pretty much the whole game, so he could just throw whatever yeah. he wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm I'm uh super thrilled to have to have won uh this game here with, with foes. And I, I know I saw the other foe player got knocked out, so I'm I gotta carry the torch for that. You you gotta <laughs> represent the faction. You are it. Yeah. If there's gonna so. be a finals spider foes in the finals, it's gonna be you, sir. Oh, finals. I think I, I have to play <laughs> the winner of like Matt Alex and I don't know the other guy, but I know Matt Alex is an amazing Web Warriors player. So you know what? But you know what Web Warriors hate? They hate Spider Foes. <laughs> I, I know it's actually not a terrible matchup for us. You get those symbiotes and don't let them reroll, and all of a sudden you're, you're yeah. chewing up you're chewing up Peter Parker and his buddies. Yeah, I think I think Web Warriors and X Men are like the two really good teams that aren't great into foes. Yeah. Um. Well, I don't, I don't know, I don't have anything else, Sam. Do you? Do you want no, to cover? That, that was pretty much. I think all my questions were there. I think the yeah, biggest yeah. thing was that the the venom circle of death it seemed to be. So I think someone at the end there wanted to just stay out of that circle, and give him a wide <laughs> yeah. berth. Oh, yeah, can yeah. I say one thing? Sure, um, of course. Just just one quick plug before I end. Um, I, uh, I I have a YouTube channel with. Uh, it's called Command Point. It's been a Kill Team YouTube channel since 2018. We've got like 6K subscribers, but we just started doing Crisis Protocol content um, over there. And uh, we have a new, so it's a new podcast called Crisis Point. And the first episode came out today. So oh, if awesome. people are watching and want to check it out, um, yeah, that would be awesome. Listen. Yeah, for Definitely sure. check that out. And thank you guys for streaming. I, I really appreciate this. This was really cool. Oh, you're most welcome. Well, congratulations on your win. Uh, really well played game. And uh, Simon, sorry, he wasn't able to stick around and talk with us, but he played amazing too. Uh, mm-hmm. Gave some people uh, a really good look at how Brotherhood could run and uh, some of the plays that you should be putting in your playbook when you run a Magneto Brotherhood. So two um, really well played uh, factions. And Shane, you were, the, you were the man of the hour. So congratulations. Welcome to the top 16. And I look forward to following your success. We will follow your success with great interest, Shane. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, have All a good right, rest guys. of your day, Thanks guys. A lot. Thanks for coming on. You too. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. I uh, hope you enjoyed the stream for the first one for Simple Math Gaming. Uh, we should have more to have in the future, um, and we'll catch everyone around.